begin to magnify him in this place tonight for all those who are watching online just magnify him in your home wherever you are lift him up he's worthy of our praise thank you Jesus blessed be your name oh God blessed be your name oh God thank you father My faith looks on to thee, thou land of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this deadly hole Grace impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal is as thou hast died for me. So may my love to thee, pure, warm, and changeless be a living Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the Son. All of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand.
His hope is covenant and blood support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay on Christ the solid rock Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ. Come on, in the next one, two minutes, just be able to pray the language of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus give you praise and glory tonight for there is no other God beside you neither is there any rock like our God he's the same yesterday he's the same today and he's the same forever the Alpha the Omega the beginning and the end of all things we welcome you here tonight thank you for healing somebody already thank you for delivering someone already we give you praise tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him praise right there in your home. Bless. Him. For those of us here, you may be seated. And if you're at home too, if you are standing, you could be seated. I give honor to Pastor Matthew, Pastor Yemsi for another day to be able to stand here and be a blessing it's not something that but yeah like the bible says no man takes this honor unto himself it's a privilege and we thank god for their lives amen um tonight we're talking about living this life living this life See, I just by the grace of God before we pray because there's going to be declarations tonight. I want to, by the grace of God, take us back to a foundational truth lest we forget. 
open your Bibles at home, your device, whatever, to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. And I read from the King James Version of the Bible. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. The just shall live by faith. There is absolutely no other way for the righteous and for the people of God to live. You have to live by faith. Because without faith, Hebrews eleven six, 6, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The text we have read suggests that, you know, you have to learn to wait for God to do things for you. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. Then in verse 4, he's connecting it. He says, there's somebody else whose soul is lifted up in themselves, who think they are something. Who will try to manipulate situations to make some things come together or go ahead and just get things going without God. Because the way the Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 in the New Living Translation says, New Living Translation verse 4 says, look at the proud. They trust in themselves. And their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Hallelujah. I believe all of us who are watching, you are that righteous. God is about to move on your behalf. The just shall live by faith. And that tells me when I read a passage like that, it tells me that there is absolutely no other way to live. It didn't say the just shall live by their logic. It didn't say the just shall live by science. It didn't say the just shall live by some economic thing that is going on in the world. We shall live by faith. And let me tell you, faith works. <laughs> As long as it's faith in God, not faith in systems, not faith in science, not faith in yourself, faith in God. That passage is so repeated in the New Testament that you wonder Paul was trying to make a statement. You see it also in Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Go to Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then you go to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. It says, now nah, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We are living in circumstances and situations of life, maybe personal and at the same time all over the world, that will tend to want you to live, to make you live another way. Hallelujah. Now please understand me. I'm not talking about making foolish decisions. Say fire is burning, I want to show them I can't burn. You will burn. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're talking about when it comes to God doing things for you. When things are tight. When it looks like there's no way out. The one who makes a way, he will make a way for you. In the name of Jesus. The just shall live by faith. Anyone who you call just, and we have been made justified by the blood of Jesus, isn't it? We are redeemed. We are his righteousness. And so he's speaking to us. There's absolutely no other way to live. 
but by faith. I have to come into money by faith. Not because I won't take into account some of the things that are out there in the world, but people have taken into account and they didn't get anywhere. But when you take it and you do it by faith, you move in and you take over. When anything you do by faith honors God. Hallelujah. Do you know Jesus had an issue when he was giving us this parable about those women who went to the judge, the judge that does not fear God or man. This man, woman went there, uh, they, they call it uh, the, the, uh, the prayer that was made, uh, importunity in prayer or something like that. You know, and this woman went badging at this judge that would not want to avenge her of her enemies. And she kept coming. And the judge said, if, even though I fear not God or man, because this woman, this woman, it keeps coming at me. <laughs> I don't want her to kill me. Let me avenge her of her enemies. And God said, I mean, Jesus said, yeah, Luke 18.8 8, in the New Living Translation. He says, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. That is, those who are his elect. How many of his elect are here today <laughs> and watching? <laughs> he says, he will grant justice to you quickly, just as he did I mean, even though that judge was slow in doing it, but God will do yours quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Now, if Jesus is saying that that tells you they are in church, <laughs> he's not talking about people out there. <laughs> he's talking about his own people. How many? Will he find who have faith? Who can wait until their change comes? People who can continue to budge at the same door until that door opens. Is he going to find a bunch of logical people? A bunch of people who they reason based on the world system. Is he going to find a bunch of people who have lost faith in the ability of their God to do something for them? And they have to take the things, the law into their hands. You know, his soul is up, is proud in him. He's a proud person, so he thinks he can help himself. And I always tell people, nobody can keep themselves from evil apart from God. No one can keep themselves from evil apart from God. The just shall live by faith. I've come to help somebody here tonight that there is no other way for you to live. It doesn't matter how long the thing has taken. The just shall live by faith. And if it's a concern of Jesus that when he comes back, we live find people who are walking by faith. That means he knows it's going to happen. And I say to God, when I see a pastor, I say, Lord, count me in. I will walk with you. I mean, this, is, this is not prophecy for me. <laughs> this is an observation. And this is not what you're going to observe in me. Hallelujah. Are you still here with me? Now, and that began to make me to say, Let, let's even look at what faith is. Because we're going to take over and take charge over some things tonight. What is faith? Paul decided to give a, a kind of description or a definition in Hebrews 11.1. 1. He says, faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I don't see it, but I am open for it. And my attitude and my actions shows that I believe I am receiving it. Hallelujah. Some people use F-A-I-T-H as a way to describe faith. Forsaking all, I trust him. Forsaking all, F-A-I-T-H, the acronym. Forsaking all, I trust him. You know, 
The truth is that the foundations of faith are rooted in the knowledge of God and who he is. The foundations of faith are what? Rooted in the knowledge of God and who he is. And that's why if there's anything people should know is God. Because it's only those who know they are God that will be strong and will do exploits. Well, please understand we thank God for men of God who can speak into our lives and prophesy and decree a thing. But it is those who know they are God. <laughs> On a personal note, that will be strong in the seasons of life that we are in and beyond. Oh, let me tell you, it has started. If you were not in need before. You are, it's good to have been in need all along to say, I, I know where this world is going and I'm going to take my stand right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when we talk about that stand, we're not talking about stand against the vaccine. I mean, you got yellow fever, DPT, diphtheria, pertussis, and all this. You know, that's not the problem. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, that's not the, There are worse things coming to the world where you have to take your stand. Right now in the U.S., they're talking about deprogramming, deprogramming those who voted for Trump. <laughs> because a lot of Christians backed him. I mean, please understand, I know there were some foolishness in some ways of some, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you know, some behavioral patterns that you won't like. <laughs> they're trying to deprogram them so they can conform to where the world is going. Those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Hence Paul, whilst he was still in prison, in, Philipp, in I mean, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. The knowledge of God is the basis you know him as your Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikeno, Jehovah Mekadesh, El Gibor, El Shaddai. Ah, once you know him and you know what he can do, you rest your faith in him. Hallelujah. If you look at Samuel, you know, in relation to the children of Eli, the Bible said they knew not God. These children, they were, they were in church, Ophni and Phineas. But they knew not the Lord. Go and read it. That's the way the script, I don't have to, in First Samuel chapter 3, I think. They knew not the Lord. No wonder they had the effrontery to go there and be eating what should be sacrificed to God. <laughs> no wonder they could be sleeping with the women right there in the temple. Oh, go and read the Bible. They knew not the Lord. And when suddenly war came, they showed up carrying the ark. <laughs> and God said, I'm killing these people here today. <laughs> carrying the ark. Suddenly you realize you need the ark. When you have functioned as a person who knew not the Lord, who did not bring God into your business, into your family, into the things that party. When trouble comes, everybody, hey, no, that's not the faith I'm talking about. I'm talking of consistent, productive, unchanging faith in any circumstance, in any situation. You are steady, you are focused. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then you know the Lord. Pharaoh also said the same thing. Exodus chapter 5 verse 2. When Moses came to make demands. He said, who is the Lord that I should obey him? After he saw the plagues, he knew who the Lord was. <laughs> because, and he was true to what he was saying because he had not seen who God is. He has not seen the demonstration of who God is for him to have faith. Are you listening to me? The foundations of faith are rooted in the knowledge of God. 
not in the knowledge of any man or anybody else, but in the knowledge of God. Because no man is going to follow you home. No, no, no yes. Imagine if you don't have faith nowadays that something was moving in your house. Pastor, please come and anoint, anoint it yourself. <laughs> now you don't even want the pastor to come. COVID, COVID, hey, Corona. Let, let them stay away. You anoint it yourself. <laughs> Praise God. We are doing, uh, you know, christening by Zoom. You have to take charge over your life in the night season, in the daytime. And know that the God on the mountain is God in the valley. The God of the day is God in the night. The God of the good times is God even in the bad times. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why I said I've come tonight to just lay before us this foundational truth. Because when push comes to shove, that's where the problem is. Those who know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. When I come back to the earth and take my people, will I find faith on the earth? Will my people have started to double into something else? Will they have that confidence to wait for me, to bless them, to make a way for them, to open doors for them? Will they have taken on the ways of the world to achieve ends that I can do beyond and well above for themselves, for them? Hallelujah. Let me just show you a few things because it's good to go into Hebrews 11. Because the title is Living What? The Life. But what is the life? The life of faith. Living the life of what? Faith. And just because people say, I am a faith person, I'm very sure they had the same issues in those days. And Paul, I believe, who wrote Hebrews said, let me break it down for them. <laughs> what faith really is. <laughs> before somebody thinks they are this man or woman of faith. Or before they think they are living by faith. Let me give them examples. And a lot of them from the Old Testament. Let me show them what faith really is. And then, I'm not going to pick all the people he mentioned in Hebrews 11. Look at uh, Hebrews 11, 17, the first one. And I declare to you that faith is evidenced in the quality of your sacrifice. <laughs> faith is evidenced in the quality of your sacrifice. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven seventeen, 17, it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, always take note, he says, by what? Faith, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. <laughs> and he did it what? By faith. Something, someone that God had promised you and took you 25 years. Walking with God to get. God told him and the next morning he was out. To go to Mount Moriah. To give God quality sacrifice. <laughs> Faith is evidence. You see, anybody can give anything. I'm very sure if they had told somebody else, I said, offer uh, some yam, some goat, you know. I said, goat, is that goat you are going, <laughs> you know. Okay. If they are told somebody else and not Abraham, that's why Abraham still today in every culture, his name is there. If God had to take Abraham through a lot of things, 
That's why in Hebrews 11, he says he thought it within himself that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone. But there was something in him that he knew about God. <laughs> that's, that's the point. There was something Abraham knew about God. First of all, the God who caused Sarah's womb to come alive. Ah, that God can make anything work. <laughs> The God who caused him also, his body, to come alive, to produce Isaac. Ah, if God decides that I should sacrifice, I know he can also. Now, and there has not been any precedence for him to do that. For him to think that. There is no precedence for him to think that that's what God will do. So, you can see that the Hebrew writer is recording it as a done thing. Even though God had to stop him. But in, in Abraham's mind, it was done. He didn't just go there and say, God, stop me. No. <laughs> he was going to kill the boy. You know, some of us, that's the way we sacrifice. God, do something. Oh. I'm about to release this money. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> it, was, it was done. Hallelujah. God also mentioned the quality of Abel's sacrifice compared to Cain. Brought the fattest and God accepted his sacrifice. And the Bible said by faith, Abel. Oh, praise the Lord. He did it by what? Faith. But Cain, on the other hand, said, God, you, you want smoke. So he went to get some things either in his farm, put them together. Okay, God, take the smoke. No. Abel went for the best things and sacrificed it before God. I remember in our Sunday school, we had a diagram in those days where Abel sacrificed. The smoke was going straight up. I don't know if that's the way it happened. <laughs> And, and, uh, and, uh, his, and Cain's, Cain's smoke was doing like this on the, on the, on the earth. Of <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. The time you give, the money you give, oh, please let nobody fool themselves that they have faith in God. When you don't apply yourself, it will task you. It will take from you but it will never kill you. It will only bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Faith is evidence in the quality of your sacrifice. And that's why the scripture says, by faith, Abraham did this. By faith, Abel did that. Another point I want us to look at. Faith is evidenced by your ability to stand alone against the tide of public opinion. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes we even think that faith is all about doing a miracle, and, and that's great, or uh, it's people doing healings and that. Oh, brilliant, or believing God for money or for breakthroughs. But there's a dimension of faith that Hebrews 11 brought out. And if you look at Hebrews 11 verse 7, it says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Hallelujah. The public opinion was that there would be no rain. Because at that time, the earth was under a greenhouse effect. And so when Noah, reading some of the other writings, and, and I think some people draw from Josephus and all that, that the time when he went out telling people this was going to happen, people didn't believe him. Because it had never happened before. But Noah, knowing what God has said to him, Oh, that's why it's important, please, to know what God is saying. Knowing what God has said to him, started to put the ark together based on the dimensions that God gave him. The Bible says he moved with fear, prepared an ark 
to the saving of his house. And we hear some historians even say, oh, uh, theologians, come, that people will come as he was building the ark, they will be mocking him. Uh, that, that's not in the Bible, but you know, other is, uh, or the Jewish traditions will say, some people even came and they were doing poo-poo around the place and doing all, just to mess him. But he kept doing what God said. If you are not ready to stand against public opinion and you say, I'm a woman, man of faith, that's a dimension. And that's why I love the work some people are doing in social ent entrepreneurship in terms of going against the government, standing. Yeah. We don't care what you, this is what our Bible says. They are doing it also by faith. They are faith men to take on systems. Take on governments. It's by faith. You don't do that with ordinary eyes like my people will say. <laughs> Hallelujah. You take them on by faith. Hallelujah. Let me quickly run through. You know, faith is also evidenced by what you are ready to release. No, sorry. By, by your action to contest. And I'm tying it up with this other. And fight on just laws. Faith is evidenced by your action to contest and fight on just laws. The world is moving in a dimension, in a direction rather. And thank God we know that we will not be part of the great tribulation. But everything is being set. The systems are in place. And whilst we are still here, some things will be, uh, in some way, the, the, we will try to introduce it. But... The Bible says in Hebrews 11.23, Hebrews, Hebrews 11.23, it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid, how many months? Three months of his parents. Who were the people who had faith? His parents. Read it very well. <laughs> By faith Moses, not Moses, because he didn't have any faith when he was born. <laughs> When he was born, was he what? Three months by his what? Parents. His parents had faith. Jacob and Amram. Because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Yeah. By faith. You see, there are some things we can apply ourselves to now that is good. You know, wear your mask, uh, don't spread the uh, coronavirus. But when things get to a point where it begins to impinge on the very God and truth you hold, you better be ready. <laughs> he said they were not afraid of the king's law. And they were people of faith. So, is it God, 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 that Hebrews 11 tries to show us all kinds of dimensions of faith that we cannot go through tonight. Dimensions and different ways of showing that somebody has faith. And the just shall live by one faith. That's the way you're going to live your life. If you want to enjoy it. Living for God. Hallelujah. Then look at another one. I mean, other people, let me even mention, so other people we know have contested and fought on just laws. People like Daniel who went to start praying even when the king's law had come. To say nobody should pray to another God for 30 days. He still opened his window. So if they want to observe him, they can observe him. Hallelujah. We know about Cory Temboom. How many have heard of Cory Temboom in the Second World War? She would hide the Jews, even though Hitler was after them in uh, Holland. She would hide, they would hide them in their house. Said, no, this is not supposed to happen. Hallelujah. And they did it by faith. Amen? So, faith is evidenced by your action to contest and fight on just laws. Let me just bring another dimension here. Faith is evidenced by what you are ready to release and forego. <laughs> the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 24 and 25. Hebrews 11, 24 and 25. It says, by faith, Moses... When he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 
choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because history has it that Moses could have easily become the next Pharaoh because of his achievements and the things he was doing. Imagine, live in that kind of status to now associate himself with slaves. And the Bible says he did it by what? Faith. By faith. He said, no, that's, that one is not for me. There's, there's idolatry there. There's evil going on there. There's sin going on there. I am settling with the God of these people. Even though he didn't know the God then, but he knew that there was something that was different about his people. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasures. And the Bible says he did it by what? Faith. Hallelujah. And lastly, it's just because of time. <laughs> Faith is evidenced <laughs> by stupid, illogical things that you are ready to do. <laughs> I use the word stupid, illogical things. Why not? <laughs> Very illogical things. Like the healing of Naaman. Elisha said, go and birth in River Jordan. Seven times. When did any water take away leprosy? Stupid, illogical things. And sometimes it's good that people can tell you you are illogical. It's good. And Naaman himself was angry with Elisha. Have the waters of uh, Damascus or Syria not better than your water? This dirty river Jordan, uh, river Abana and Fapa, there are better waters there. I would, go and, I would have rather gone to bathe in those than come and bathe in this one. He went the first time. The thing was still there. Second time, the thing was there. Third time, the thing was there. The sixth time, the thing was there. I'm very sure as he was coming out of the water, I'm killing somebody here today. He <laughs> was a general. But he went the seventh. And when he came out the seventh, his skin was as fresh as that of a baby. That's what the Bible records. How many would like that kind of skin now? You are 50, you're 60. No, no forget it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at uh, Elisha too. Throwing uh, a stick in the water to make an axe head float. Stupid, illogical things. <laughs> and there are so many of them in scripture. Bring your oil. Uh, bring the bottle. Uh, the, 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 you know, and from today, you know, he kept pouring in the, in the vessels for the woman. Second Kings 4. He kept pouring in the vessel. And yet this oil was coming from just one small bottle. <laughs> and it was filling every other thing. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Something is about to change for someone tonight. And it's going to be by faith. By faith. Some of you, you are going to go into something that you are afraid of. Oh, praise God. And that's where I'm stopping tonight. Somebody here tonight, you can't afford to live by fear or by the newspaper or by social media. Some of you, for you to move to the next level that God has ordained for you, you have to go into something that you are afraid of. Do you know that the Bible says, I, mean, I don't have the scripture for you right now, it's in Hebrews 11, that by faith, the children of Israel went on dry land through the Red Sea. It, you have to do it by faith. When last did you walk when water is standing on your side and another one is standing like a wall? You walk there, you will see. No, no, no that's, that's the point. They were afraid, but this thing was taking them to their destiny. The place was dry, 
the water has parted. But please understand. It, you don't step in there even if God parted. You are, going, you are still wondering. Hmm, nah, this thing, <laughs> if, this, <laughs> if this water drop. <laughs> and you are walking through. Looking left. Looking right. You, th you think they were necessarily walking like that? <laughs> Praise that God. No. Then some of them were pulling the down. <laughs> and they were walking through. By faith. The Bible says it. By faith. They walked through. As, as through the Red Sea. As if they were walking on dry land. It says which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Oh, there are some things you are walking into. Trusting God that somebody else will try it and they will fail. <laughs> but because it is for you. Even though you may have to go through it. Watching left and right. But you are moving anyway. <laughs> oh get ready. It may be a project. It may be a, a, some major thing that God has ordained for you. You still have to step in by faith. Stand to your feet tonight. If you are at home stand to your feet too. Hallelujah. Makatayalabasa. Oh, la candesa. Makote kerian de lebrosa. Oh, blessed be your name, oh God. Blessed be your name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Le kando shataya la basata. Wokoto brande lebrosa. The just shall live by faith. There is no other life to live but a life of faith, a life of trusting God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, begin to worship him. Magnify his name. He's your God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Even in this season, I am going to do what God says do. I'm going where God says go. I'm going to function the way heaven has ordained for me to function come on begin to magnify the God of heaven he's the king of kings the lord of lords whatever he has promised he will do and whatever he has promised he will bring to pass lift up your hands everybody just lift up those hands to heaven and begin to magnify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikenu, El Gibor, El Shaddai. We worship you. Mare Kazobriende Lebrosa, Manta Kande Lebrosa. In Jesus' name. You know, from the text we started with, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. Though and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Don't get to the point where your soul is lifted up. To say, hey. No man is putting me down. I'm just going to do what I want. <laughs> Let God make a way for you. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. We're praying three prayers tonight. First one, we are coming against delay. Every delay in your life. Because God may have appointed some things and the enemy is trying to stop it. How many know that when you call on God, he answers? Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus and he said, Father, I know that thou hearest me always. But for the sake of the people, let me shout. <laughs> but you are shouting tonight, not necessarily for anybody's sake. <laughs> but you are taking authority in the name of Jesus. How many will feel there's some delays in certain areas for those who are actual? I know those who are, uh, you know, virtual, you are there. God is going to change your story, He's going to change your circumstance. There is no other way to live this life. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God 
must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently oh without fail seek him so right now you're going to say by the power in the name of jesus and the authority of the word of god and by the blood of the lamb every delay in my life every spirit of delay wherever it's operating in my life i command you get out of my life get out of my family get out of my business get out of my future come on begin to speak it tonight every false spirit of delay like a tile brosa le casa yes i'm waiting for god but at the same time i'm taking authority over anything that is a source of delay in my life in my family in my finances in my business in my career in my ministry in that which pertains to my purpose my destiny come on begin to take charge La boca se teri ande le brosha. Aye la bakasa. Makote kete ndalabasa. Ye kando sata. In Jesus name. Oh come on say a good amen. I said say a good amen. In your sitting room say a good amen. Praise the Lord. This next one. Long standing issues. This is not necessarily a delay. It's like you are dealing with something. It could be a sickness. It could be something somewhere. Some pain. Some uh, marital conflict. Something that has been long standing. We command a turn around tonight. I said we command a turn around tonight. For those who are here, how many will say there are some long standing issues that must turn around in the name of Jesus? The devil is a liar. You will not be frustrated. I said you will not be frustrated. Come on, say right now, by the power and the name of Jesus and the authority of the word of God and by the blood of the Lamb, every long-standing issue in my life, in my family, in my business, in my career, I command, go, go. Let there be a turnaround. Come on, begin to speak it right now. Labokotaya labasa. Mandesha. Zari brakando sikataya labasa. Long standing financial issues. Long standing marital issues. Long standing business issues. Ayele labasata and sikandele brosha. Let there be a turnaround tonight. We declare a turnaround tonight. By the power and the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb. A new day, a new season. Thank you, Father in jesus name oh come on say a good amen one more every failure at the edge of success you're about to come into it you know there's some dreams i see it shows that some things are going to come to pass and then i see another one and god uses what you like sometimes or what you engage in football you know as someone said in front of a goal, I was about to shoot and I didn't shoot. <laughs> and the, 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 the post looked like it was wide open. I woke up. This was some time ago. I woke in the net. <laughs> I, I was about, I couldn't score the goal. I knew it meant something spiritual. You don't, you don't just say, hey, praise God, maybe I was playing for Arsenal. No. <laughs> something is, was wrong. And I got something happened not long after that. I said, okay, maybe this was what God was warning me about. Every failure at the edge of success, we stop it tonight. In relation to what God has for you, unless God does not have it for you. In relation to what God has planned for you, every failure at the edge of success we come against tonight come on say by the power and the name of jesus and the authority of the word of god and by the blood of the lamb i speak against every failure at the edge of success i command from today no more no more no more come on begin to speak right now i'm getting in i'm scoring the goal 
I'm possessing the possession. I'm coming into the blessing. Mandesa. Kando Shatayalabasa. Lekete Briende Lebrosa. Makando Shataya. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No more failure at the age of success. I prophesy to your life tonight. A new day is coming. A new season is coming. A roller coaster of blessing. A roller coaster of blessing. That is going to be your portion. No more failure at the edge of success. No more failure at the edge of success. Wherever you have been ridiculed, a miracle is coming. Everyone who has laughed at you will laugh with you. Everyone who has looked down on you will begin to look up to you. No more failure at the edge of success. No more failure at the edge of success. I speak it tonight. A change is coming. A new day, a new beginning. Whatever you touch will prosper. Whatever you touch will increase. Whatever you touch will go forward. Thank you, Father. Come on, begin to magnify him tonight. I said begin to magnify him tonight. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he spoken, will he not do it? As he said, it will he not bring it to pass. He said he has given a commandment to bless. And you have been blessed and nobody can reverse it. Oh, I said nobody can reverse your blessing. No devil can reverse your blessing. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a mark to praise. Praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I want us to prepare our seat tonight. Our tithes. Our offerings. Everybody, including those who are watching online. This is the way to live your life. Release for increase. Because God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you having sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. When you release, that is the promise. He is able to give more seed to the sower. He doesn't give seed to the one who doesn't sow. He gives seed to the sower. Hallelujah. So tonight and do it confidently. Knowing that this is the God you serve. Who is making that demand. Hallelujah. For those of us who are watching online. You see on the screen already. Uh, the IDAN number and the SWIFT code. For giving if you are outside the country. If you are outside the UK. I'm very sure many of us may already be familiar with that number. So please make sure you sow your seed for those who are outside of the UK. Don't just be part of the service and not sow. Also for those who are in the UK, we have our bank account details up there. The PayPal. Uh, if you want to text maximum, you can text the 30 pounds to KICCDONA to 70085 and you can also go on our website slash I donation and give on the website and you can call 0285250000 I guarantee that no nothing you give is ever going to be departing from your life it will come back in multiples the word of God and the scriptures cannot be broken. It will reward all your 